There are some rare events that we should consider. Two of these are degenerate pivots and unbounded programs. Remember the rationale for why the extreme value of the objective function occurs at a vertex is because our objective function creates a family of level curves that pass through the feasible region. If we're assuming our objective function is linear, this is a family of lines, or planes, or whatever. As the value of the objective function changes, the lines, planes, whatever, shift. And any time the line, plane, whatever, passes through the region, there will be a set of points giving the same value for the objective function. Continuity guarantees we can increase the value of the objective function until it passes through a vertex. However, if the objective function is parallel to a boundary line, then at some point we'll meet the boundary line. This will give us an infinite number of solutions that give us the same extreme value. For example, consider this problem. Introducing our slack variables and our objective function as an equation gives us the system. Our initial tableau is y has the most negative coefficient in the L row, so it will be our entering variable. The quotients of the constant and coefficients of the entering variable are, so we'll pivot on the y column of the second row, making c2 a free variable, and so the exiting variable. And so row reducing gives us... Now x has the greatest negative coefficient, so we find... So we'll pivot on the first row, making c1 our exiting and now free variable. Row reducing gives us... Since all coefficients in the L row are non-negative, we have our optimal solution. So setting the free variables equal to zero gives us... which will be the optimal solution. Or is it? Notice that our L row gives us the equation, so C1 equals zero gives us the maximum value for L. But C2 and C3 are also free variables, so we can choose different values for them as long as we satisfy our positivity constraints. So we have to have C1 equals zero. But suppose C2 equals, so oh, how about four? The last row gives us, solving gives us, making all of our slack variables non-negative, so we're still inside the feasible region. But if C1 is 0, C2 is 4, and C3 equals 66, then we find... And so our objective function has... Another solution occurs at... And we can find many others. And note that our objective function produces a line parallel to one of our constraints, so this result is not unexpected. It's also possible for an objective function to have no greatest value. So, for example, if we try to solve this linear programming problem, now we need to rewrite in standard form and introduce our slack variables to give us... Our initial tableau will be we pivot on x in the first row, we'd pivot on y, but all of our quotients are negative. Let's see what this means. Setting our free variable to zero gives us for the first row, and so and in order for x to be non-negative, we require... But this will be true for any value of y. And in the second row we have... And so... And again, any value of y will make c2 non-negative. In the row for our, our objective function, setting c1 equal to 0 gives us... But since y is a free variable, and any value will satisfy the constraints, 
we can choose Y to be as large as we want. This makes L as large as we want, and so L is unbounded and there's no maximum value. Now, degenerate pivots are not really a big deal because it just means we'll have more than one optimal solution. And unbounded linear programs are also not really a big deal once we recognize them. A bigger problem is known as cycling. Under relatively rare conditions, it's possible for the simplex algorithm to cycle. The same set of free variables keeps recurring without leading to a termination condition. This can be avoided using Bland's rule for choosing the entering variable. Instead of choosing the variable with the greatest negative coefficient, choose the lowest index variable with the negative coefficient. For example, if we have the tableau, we can reduce it using the standard rule and then using Bland's rule. So our first pivot will be y on the third row, and so we get that our next pivot will be x on the first row. And this gives us our solution. Now if we use Bland's rule, our first pivot will be on x, that's the lowest indexed variable with a negative coefficient, in the first row. Then y on the third row. And this gives us the solution, which is the same solution. So why don't we use Bland's rule generally? By choosing the entering variable with the greatest effect on L, the standard rule moves more quickly to the optimal solution. In very large systems, the difference makes the simplex algorithm faster, unless it cycles. And since cycling is relatively rare, we typically use the faster method.